thank you for joining CivilNet. Uh, the situation has not been calm in Armenia. We're, we've been trying to understand what's going on from different per perspectives this last 10 days. Uh, developments yesterday were critical. Um, we're trying still to confirm some information. Some information is not being confirmed. There are members of the Sasna Zared group who are in hospital. There are police officers who've been hurt. There are citizens who've been detained unlawfully. Uh, yesterday, a group of um, protesters rallied around for the second day already around Yerevan to gather support. And in the rally, uh, Arsine Khanjian, a well known public fi figure and actress, was also there. Uh, we've spoken with her in Armenian, but today we want to discuss her impressions and what she's learned being here starting yesterday until today. Thank you, Arsine, for being here with us. Uh, my pleasure. So you just arrived from the airport and went straight to the rally. Uh, we, we caught you on our li live feed taking footage. Uh, what are your impressions what's going on? Uh, you arrived, you're saying that you wanted to be there and see for yourself what's happening. And 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, what are your impressions of what's happening in Armenia being here firsthand? Of course, like uh, any Armenian uh, in the diaspora, uh, uh, we, we learned uh, very uh, early on uh, the, 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 about the situation, uh, about what was going on in Yerevan. Uh, we had to rely for that on mostly uh, the Armenian uh, media sources. Uh, and uh, soon after, uh, I, I realized that there was very little analysis of what were the actual reasons for uh, this uh, uh, upheaval and this uh, resistance uh, because it sounds like uh, it did sound like it was a resistance uh, it wasn't uh, that there were there were uh, expressions of uh, extreme discontent uh, unfortunately uh, the information was not circulating clearly about why why now and what was specifically uh, the, uh, the at this time uh, the, the claims uh, per se and, and then uh, myself I was traveling uh, I was in Europe Europe, so I was getting bits and pieces of information whenever I could until I arrived last night uh, and I'm, my presence here is really due to uh, to attend the wedding uh, of, of dear friends uh, but uh, as I got into the car I heard that uh, uh, two of the people who have been uh, have been injured and they have been taken uh, out and uh, they, they were under uh, supervision, uh, uh, police supervision, they were taken to hospital. But uh, I realized that the only way I can really understand is to join uh, the demonstration because there was one uh, that was uh, starting uh, actually uh, when I arrived around 10 o'clock uh, last night. So. Um, uh, my immediate impulse uh, was to be there uh, because I wanted to be with the people. I mean, it seems to me that this country has been uh, suffering for a long time now uh, from uh, uh, an absence of real uh, understanding of how it's being governed. Uh, I, I think the uh, uh, this lack of transparency, uh, this lack of uh, people's ability to feel that they are fully respected citizens of this country has been going on for a number of years. Uh, and now it, this is the summation of a situation where it is no longer acceptable for people to feel that they, they, they can remain in the country, uh, the ones who are choosing to remain in the country, and uh, uh, feel that they have something to say. So it's the democratic foundation of how a government and the people are uh, interacting that is being uh, questioned. Uh, let alone the specifics, it turns out, of uh, why uh, have, uh, they have taken on uh, uh, Arsene, I wanted to go back to something you said er earlier. You, said there were, you, were, you were saying there were bits and pieces of information and uh, not enough analysis. Uh, is this because there isn't enough news coming out of Armenia? Is this because the diaspora isn't well versed in, in the develop, developing events in Armenia? I mean, and is unable to make the connections themselves? Uh, Both. 
I think both. I think the information is not uh, freely circulating. I mean, the country has major transparency issues in terms of, uh, of anything significant that happens. And this is from political to economic to social issues. I think it has always been very difficult to really understand, even for people who live here, what's really going on. And then when you translate that into the communication that exists or does not exist all these years later after independence with the diaspora, uh, I think things are uh, culminating into a real um, intensity, but of no substance uh, per se. I think the diaspora is functioning still uh, in its uh, commitment to support Armenia in every way. The diaspora is uh, terrified of the possibility of uh, ever any civil war or any blood uh, spilled uh, within the country. So uh, in the absence of understanding the real context of the, uh, the, 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 the people's uh, uh, displeasure and frustration and anger, uh, I think the, uh, suddenly they're left to personal interpretation based on their own uh, historical connection with Armenia or their sense of identity. There is no real evaluation of what is really happening in Armenia that is being transmitted to the diaspora. I do think that the diaspora has a huge role to play here, be it institutionally, be it organizationally, along the lines of the party uh, uh, sort of uh, configurations but at the end of the day uh, right now as we speak there is nothing that is being carried out and uh, individual Armenians are basically making their own judgment of what they should be uh, uh, what what they can imagine understand uh, or interpret uh, the situation is but this is, has uh, been happening for such a long time ever since True. Armenia's independence this this lack of communication or objectivity towards the reality in Armenia has been lacking generally in that in the diaspora many of whom judge Armenia by the pleasantness or unpleasantness of their vacations spent here. But uh, also, I have to say yesterday I heard something very specific uh, from one of the demonstrators uh, and uh, I was saying the diaspora's biggest fear is to, uh, uh, to have human losses caused by ourselves, between ourselves. The diaspora is terrified by this. I mean, the diaspora, as we know, has been marked by the history of the genocide. So spilling blood, loss, is a, is a traumatic uh, uh, a, a sort of memory. So they certainly don't want to see Armenia, that who is miraculously now an independent country, and the diaspora has dreamt about this independence, this free Armenia. Uh, so they don't want to turn the paradise that we have imagined in our uh, uh, con subconscious into hell. So in a way, they're, they're watching uh, from far, thinking that the best way is to leave to the local authorities uh, the way to handle this. But I feel that the, the diaspora has to become a participant. The diaspora has to be involved, especially in situations like this, where we have to know that in the country there is repression. In the country, of course, there is corruption. We know that. We don't want to talk about these things so that we don't, do, uh, we don't wash our dirty linens in public. But I think we are now a country, a nation, uh, with our history, the way it has divided us, that we have to say that if we have to be participating one way or another. The diaspora has sent a lot of financial support over the years, a lot of cultural uh, and, and educational, uh, 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 social organizations have uh, uh, been built to support the population. But uh, yesterday, as I was saying, uh, one of the demonstrators said, you know, the diaspora, you are making uh, very major, uh, taking very major uh, uh, mistakes, steps, uh, mistaken steps here. And I said, how is that? And they said, but why, why can't you see that all the money that is coming into the country is going into corruption, into systems of operation that are not, at the end of the day, benefiting 
to the people. And I think the frustration today is, of course, geopolitical. There is the Gharapakh question. What's going, what is going to happen to the land? What is going to happen to? Uh, I, there was something I was going to ask you. Like the, uh, the Gharapakh developments in April, uh, we saw that the diaspora consolidated very fast. They tried to get involved in any, any little way or large way that they could, sending in sleeping bags to cans. Here we see that it's as a major problem as Gharabagh and as related to Gharabagh as it could be, and yet there's no even small consolidation, small attempts of people. If there are any, I'm not aware of, I apologize. However, this lack of trust in itself that the diaspora can be involved in Armenia's internal affairs, where does this come but from? But it's a, it's a historical phenomenon. Uh, I mean, since the independence of Armenia, I think uh, the diaspora has been allowed uh, only on few accounts and maybe not even allowed, but it has given itself uh, that responsibility to express itself, to uh, mobilize around it. The question of the gen genocide uh, denial, of course, and the necessary recognition, and then the whole question of Gharapakh, the lands. But those are two very concrete uh, historical elements that diaspora has felt and lived for the last hundred years. We don't want any more loss of land, properties. We don't want any more uh, either this uh, continuous uh, denial of, of the history, which constitutes the diaspora's major identity. However, the diaspora has never managed until now, even with the diaspora and political parties who have eventually have come into uh, Armenia, in to Armenia. establish themselves uh, at par with the existing uh, dynamic of the authorities. There may be obvious explanations for that, for whatever reason, however, this has not succeeded. Therefore, the diaspora cannot allow itself and does not know how to do it. We can talk about the land and Gharapakh. We can send reinforcements in that sense, intellectual and otherwise. Uh, we can talk about the genocide. But the internal affairs are so confusing for the, to the diaspora. Of course, to the diaspora, I mean, we, we see it within the country it's so confusing for people to understand what is their predicament. So how does the, the diaspora mobilize around this? Right now, for instance, today, as of yesterday, the major issue for me is why, other than the Armenian press, in the diaspora a little bit, but coming out of Armenia as such, other than the Armenian media and press, why is the international community not bringing, and I'm talking about non-Armenians, the international community, all these countries around the world, when the, the failed putsch happened in, in Turkey, everyone instantly was talking about what was going on in Turkey. It's been 10 days, there is serious uh, uh, upheaval in this country. There is an anger that is being expressed and more and more with the larger participation of the people. They have democratic claims that are being ignored uh, under all kinds of manipulations, institutional manipulations that belong to the, uh, to the authorities, to the government. So why is it that the diaspora is not asking itself where are where is the international community's attention on Armenia? We have incredible lawyers out there uh, in the United States, in France, uh, in, in the in the rest of the world, who know about human rights uh, violation issues, who have work, worked in those fields. Why are they not participating? By first of all, finding out what's going on here in Armenia, and then triggering attention. Why uh, the, the journalists who are working for all these important media outlets uh, in, in, in the diaspora, why aren't they pushing, or maybe they are, and probably the challenges are big, but all the same, I, we are not hearing anything in terms of how the diaspora is trying to address what's going on right now in Yerevan. So this is, this is where I feel that the diaspora has to stop feeling that they are only uh, capable of intervening in certain aspects of our national identity. And I call myself a national uh, uh, identity because I am a diasporan Armenian, but this country is everything I feel I have to live for. This is the reality. And I think every diasporan has to at least ask that question uh, to himself or herself, what does it mean? If they don't choose to be participating, then that's fine, then it's clear. But if they don't know if they want or not, that is a problem, and it, it is a very urgent problem right now. 
we need this connection to immediately happen. Uh, we hear from a lot of protesters that where's the diaspora, we need help. However, probably the authorities have made sure that such intervention does not occur, does not happen. Uh, there's this duality, but also another question, that wasn't a question, but a question for you. How long will you be here and being here, uh, you personally, what kind of action do you plan to take? Uh, I will be here until August 5th uh, and uh, in terms of uh, the actions I can take, I think the most important uh, thing for me is right now to really be with the people. The number of people is uh, increasing by the minute. Uh, I think people are coming to understand uh, between gray zones that there is ve something very important right now happening. Uh, I think the resistance is not only in that enclave where uh, Sassnazare are right now uh, holding their grievances and holding, uh, being held there. Uh, I think the people out in the city are, uh, uh, they were on balconies, in cars, walking yesterday. There were thousands, I don't know how many the number was. There's no but exact uh, estimation. We've heard from 5,000 to 15,000. Uh, if we take the minimum of 5,000, I would say this is a very serious gathering. So for me, it is important to listen ask questions uh, and try to understand from whatever I can gather uh, what it is that uh, I have to bring and I'm open to any participation contribution. I think this conversation is a, is a tricky one for me because uh, on the one hand I feel that I want to be uh, uh, be involved. At the same time I want to be involved in a responsible way and in the absence of uh, confirmed information, this makes my own personal uh, Decisions, ethical yeah, decision yes. uh, complicated, but I think this is a risk that I have to take and I think this is a risk that the diaspora has to take and maybe the diaspora has to, individuals in the diaspora, they have to put uh, pressure on their own organizations that they belong to or they're around and those organizations don't have to be political parties necessarily, they can be cultural uh, uh, organizations. Everyone has to feel that there is something at, at stake for all of us. It's not only about the people of uh, Armenia. Uh, I mean, we have been talking for years now about how Armenia is emptying the, the, the youth, the, 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 the driving force, the next generation is leaving. We know that the government is aware of this, and we know that the government has its own agenda of uh, preservation and what is best. I'm not sure what the government thinks is best for the Armenian people. I am sure that they know what is best for their own survival. And this may be fine to a certain extent, but it doesn't look like the, the, the sense of survival for the government is really 100% in the spirit of serving the people of Armenia. The external pressures uh, geopolitic, geo, geopolitically are extreme. Uh, we know that between Azerbaijan, Turkey and Russia there are a lot of things at play, uh, but it seems that this is the only attention that we're getting and this is the only pressure that we have to address. We don't have the support of anyone else in the world. And I think at this time of uh, open communication, Armenia, like Syria managed, like other, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, Arab revolutions, I mean, things are happening in Armenia. I hope not to the extent of disaster as uh, Syria has gone through, but I think also that if we don't make this uh, clear and, and uh, transparent and available for people to see and understand, it may become a really dangerous trap. If I may conclude, what you're saying is that probably diaspora is not understanding that what's happening is now in Armenia is putting Armenia's statehood at risk it's not just an internal uh, upheaval. It's also about Armenia's persistence and statehood regarding also its, its place in geopolitical uh, situation and time. Diaspora is, as I said, uh, is terrified of losing the statehood. We have it and we just don't want to let it go. The truth is we had it, it evolved, Maybe this is time to reconfigure uh, the concept of that statehood. Maybe this is the time to say, okay, 
We have it, but may, we have to reinvent it. We have to change certain things. We have to open our eyes and we have to become uh, uh, participants. We have to in include our conversation to what's going on in Armenia with the citizens who live in this country. Uh, it may sound uh, scary, but Every culture, every state has evolved over history through changes. If Armenia needs change, we have to take that, those steps and hopefully peacefully. And that's where the pressure has to happen to, uh, uh, with, with or at least the negotiation with the existing government. This is not about this government deciding what is going to be the future of the Armenian people. The Armenian people are in Armenia and outside of it. We are responsible of our, his, of our history, and not only financially. We are responsible of our uh, future by being in a conversation constantly. We do have examples of that in history. Israel is that country. It doesn't mean that in Israel everything is peaceful and that everyone gets along. It doesn't mean that the, the, the Jewish diaspora and Israel are always seeing eye to eye. No, but that conversation is open. That conversation does not exist for Armenian people. The Armenian nation doesn't have that privilege. And this is what we have to uh, uh, address. And perhaps this is the time where we have to start conversing. We have a ministry of the diaspora. I am not sure, I've never figured out other than photo ops for uh, meetings uh, of this community and that community and talking about language issues and uh, you know tourism and so on. What are we really doing? That ministry of diaspora for me well, is an essential body to establish communication of responsibility both from Armenia uh, towards the diaspora and from the diaspora towards Armenia at every le level of building a nation. And yet the Minister of Culture receives such honorable reception wherever she Minister goes. of yes. diaspora, yes. Diaspora, yes. Uh, same. Uh, thank you, Arsina, very much for this conversation. I hope uh, the diaspora learns from your experience here in Armenia. Uh, and um, thank you to the viewers for joining us. Stay well, CivilNet. We're working 24-7 to bring you the latest updates.